Hello, my name is Brian Hudson, and I've been teaching English here at CNM for about the last year and a half. Trish O'Connor had asked me if I would share uh, with you all something that I use in my analytic and argumentative writing course. This is something that I call the analytic triangle. Now, I think that the OER English textbook that we, uh, we have now does a really great job of explaining analysis. A much better job than the Norton did, and I've taught from the Norton probably the last decade, but it didn't do a good job of explaining the components of an analysis, and I think that this OER English book does although I do augment it with, a, with um, some other stuff. If you're not familiar with the OER English textbook, you can find it on the CNM English webpage. So in chapter 19, which explains analysis, it breaks it down into f uh, three main components, uh, four main components the examples that you use, the explanation that you give of those examples, assertions, and then the significance of the analysis. So this OER textbook actually inspired me to create what I call the analytic triangle, and my students have written stronger analyses because of this, and it's much easier to talk about uh, analysis in a in the kind of meta sense in the classroom when we have this vocabulary to use. Before I get into talking about the analytic triangle, I want to go over a couple things that I have used to augment the OER's definition of analysis. So the OER talks about assertions in a kind of broad sense. I'm much more systematic uh, in my analytic writing classroom about what those assertions can look like. So first of all, I break it down into the main assertion and the sub-assertions. And then I tell the students that they have to be able to fit their assertions and sub-assertions into one of these formulas. Now I get these formulas from uh, and are in interpretation of stasis theory and rhetoric. And if you'll notice, I have both the positive articulations of these assertions and the negative. So my course is about text about the future. So when students write about a particular text, for instance, we viewed Kermit the Frog's Rainbow Connection, which uh, professor at uh, SUNY, I think rightfully said, was probably the most popular instance of the utopian impulse. So if they're going to write about Kermit the Frog's Rainbow Connection, and they're making a very simple main assertion that the text shows us that the future is good, right, then they can fit that into the positive formulation of an ethical argument or if uh, they find uh, a, a text about the future being bad, the Hunger Games, what have you, they can argue the negative side of an ethical argument. But we practice on several texts uh, with group work and discussion. Uh, we practice how to make sure that our assertions fit one of these formulas. And one thing that I like to do when I introduce these formulas is ask the students to try to think of an argument that won't fit, that we can't classify as one of these six assertions. And we, they never really are able to, uh, unless they give me something that really isn't an assertion, maybe it's a statement of fact, but I also like to tell the students once we finish that exercise that the practice or the, the exercise of us trying to find an assertion that's outside of these categories is in itself, in and of itself, a, a, a 
practice that uses a categorical assertion or tests a categorical assertion. So the textual analysis essay that we do, when I start using the analytic triangle, starts at the bottom here. Now I don't use the rhetorical triangle schema where I have something on each point, but I show how they can build their analysis up to a very pointed main assertion. So we start with examples, and the book gives us an explanation of that, the explanation of those examples, and then assertions I break into the sub and main assertions that I showed in that last slide. And using these components of analysis, students are really able to not only understand the arguments that they're making, but they're able to critique their peers, and a they're able to pick out types of assertions and the components of an, an analysis in uh, texts that they read. So this is the first essay in the sequence. The next essay is a literary analysis, and while their textual analysis, I do introduce them to a little bit of, uh, of film language and language of rhetoric, I push the literary language in this second unit and we talk about um, using it much more. And so this is why I represent that on the triangle here. So it's the same components which with, but with literary terms being used in the sub-assertions and or the explanation of the examples. Their last essay, their research essay, you know, whether they pick a fictional or non-fictional text, is the same formula here, but one thing that I like to do is add from the book the significance that this, their analysis has to the broader conversations around that text. So for instance, if the students decide to pick something like Buffy the Vampire Slayer to analyze, well, they can do their analysis, but they're gonna to have to also explain how that, deal, how that um, relates to the significance of uh, Buffy the Vampire Scholarship by, um, by people that uh, call themselves Whedonites, right? The followers of Joss Whedon type. There's a whole scholarly community, if you didn't know, uh, surrounding uh, Buffy and, uh, and those type of shows. The book does a good job of explaining the significance, but I like to hold that off until the research essay, uh, partially because I don't allow my students to do research for the first two essays. I want them to focus on their own reasoning and focus on the text itself as much as possible to develop those analytic skills. Okay, well that is my short explanation of the analytic triangle. I hope your students find it as helpful as mine have. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at bhudson11 at cnm.edu, and I would be happy to share with you uh, any of the materials that I have for my course, uh, including this, this PowerPoint presentation. Thanks.